NASA shock, how the mystery explosion wiped out 800 miles of Russia is still baffling scientists. We're talking about the Tunguska explosion, mystery explosion in space that had a direct impact on Earth, and it wiped out more than 770 square miles of forest in Russia. This is still leaving scientists baffled, and it was revealed during a radio broadcast. This is uh, from Wikipedia, we'll get some information. And also the celestial bodies, what difference a comet has from an asteroid and meteor, and what could it, what could it have been? This is also by Callum Hoare on Express UK, today's article. So the residents near Krasnoyarsk cry in Russia were left astonished, frightened, shaken. It was the morning of June 30th, 1908. That's when the ground rumbled and their windows smashed when a fireball believed to have been up to 100 meters wide, that's 300 yards, 300 feet, sorry, 300 feet ripped through the air above them. It was a remote forest of Podkamenya in Tunguska, and uh, it was in North Russia, or it's now part of Russia, and that space rock uh, put an end to 770 miles of forest and wiped out almost 80 million trees. Now, uh, thank goodness the area in which the explosion occurred was not that inhabited, and there were no official reports of human casualties. This was revealed during a BBC Radio 4 In Our Time podcast. The professor of space science at the Open University, John Zarnecki, explained how this strange incident played out. He said in 2005, there was a big event in uh, 1908, and it was really bizarre. There were uh, hundreds of miles of forest where the trees were completely flattened by an enormous explosion. And as we can see, it was in the um, Siberia area, North Russia. Um, looking, looking at the map, Chelyabinsk is uh, again close to the Arctic Circle of Siberia, but it's um, uh, to the uh, much to the left of the uh, Tunguska event area. Now, nobody was killed because it was such an isolated area, but no impact crater either. But uh, we'll see later that it could be that the lake, Lake Cheko, which was formed at the time of the Tunguska event, could have been the impact of this, um, what many believe to be a comet, leaving ice and water there. But we'll go into that a little bit later. But they didn't find an immediate impact crater. Zarnecki went on to reveal that he thought, what he thought was a reasonable explanation. He said, it seems likely this was caused by a comet entering the atmosphere. And we'll go into that, what a comet is, because the difference in makeup to an asteroid, we think it's possible the comet vaporized explosively to flatten the trees. But uh, there has been much debate over what actually happened, and researchers are still not in agreement. In 1927, a Russian team led by Leonid Kulik made the trip there, and uh, he had a field trip in order to find out, find the area 31 miles of the flattened trees to see what was going on. And he proposed that an extraterrestrial meteor had exploded in the atmosphere. And even though um, he did not find any remains of a meteor, now Russian researchers later proposed that it was a comet. Comets, as we know, are largely made up of ice and not rock. So the absence of alien rock fragments makes sense that it could have been a comet. The ice would have started to evaporate entering the Earth's atmosphere and kept on evaporating to do so as it hit the ground. And the mystery deepens. Uh, alternative theories emerge, as some suggesting it was caused by uh, an alien spacecraft or a nuclear explosion, neither of which struck, of course. In 1963, scientists released a report in a bid to put the rumors to bed, and Florensky wrote a document claiming it was a meteorite after all. Now this was backed up in 2013 when a team of the National Academy of Scientists of Ukraine 
led by Victor uh, Kvasnista, uh, analyzed macroscopic samples from the area. The remnants had traces of carbon mineral called ion stalite, which is a crystal structure almost like a diamond. And this particular mineral forms when a graphite containing structure such as a meteor crashes into Earth. Dr. Kravnistia said our studies of samples from Tunguska, as well as research from many other authors, reveals meteorite origin of Tunguska event. He says we believe that nothing paranormal happened there in Tunguska, but it was necessary, what was necessary was to look for very small particles. This is not conclusive, as meteor showers often uh, can sprinkle remains across the earth. So it doesn't mean that this, uh, just because they found some particles, that it was caused to the Tunguska uh, event. Bill Cook, who leads NASA's meteoroid, meteoroid Environmental Office, says why it's so difficult to put an answer on what really happened there. He said, our atmosphere will break apart a rock smaller than the football field across. Most people think they can uh, they come wailing in from space, outer space, and leave a crater, and that's a big smoking piece of rock on the ground. The truth is kind of the opposite. So in the case of Tunguska, they think that the explosion was so intense, it obliterated its remains eight miles before the impact. The um, process of vaporizing the object into tiny pieces known as cosmic dust, meaning we may never know whether it was caused by a comet or a meteor. Uh, now, what is the difference? Well, we're going into space place uh, nasa.gov, and um, what is the difference between asteroid and meteor? The asteroids are small, rocky bodies orbiting the sun. Uh, meteors and asteroids are both types of space rocks, but the difference between the two depends on how close they are to the Earth's surface. The asteroid is a small rocky body which orbits the sun. Most asteroids in our solar system are found in the asteroid belt, the region between Mars and Jupiter, but they can also hang out in other locations around the solar system. For example, some asteroids orbit the sun in a path that takes them near the Earth. Meteorites, some, uh, sometimes one asteroid could smash into the other, causing small pieces of the asteroid to break off, and those pieces are called meteoroids. And meteors, if a meteoroid comes close enough to the Earth, entering the Earth's atmosphere, it vaporizes, turns into a meteor, and a streak of light in the sky can be seen as it approaches us. Because of their appearance, these streaks of light are sometimes called shooting stars, but scientists know that meteors are not stars at all, they're just bits of rock. And because meteors leave streaks of light in the sky, they're sometimes confused with comets. But they're different. Now, comets. Comets orbit the sun, like asteroids. But comets are made up of ice and dust, not rock. And as a comet orbits, orbit takes it towards the sun, the ice and dust begin to vaporize. And that vaporized ice and dust become the comet's tail. And you can see a comet even when it's very far from Earth. However, when you see a meteor, it is always, it's always in our atmosphere. And meteorites, some meteoroid rocks don't vaporize completely in the atmosphere. In fact, sometimes they survive their trip through Earth's atmosphere and land as rocks on the Earth's surface, and those rocks are called meteorites. NASA's Johnson Space Center has collected a collection of meteorites that have been collected from many different locations on Earth, and the locations, the collections act as a meteorite library for scientists by studying types of meteorites they learn more about asteroids, planets, and other parts of our solar system. And now going to the, uh, the investigation of Lake Cheko, a small freshwater lake in Siberia, what's now the Evenkiski district in Krasnoyarsk. The lake is a small bowl-shaped lake. It's about 500 meters or 1,600 feet long and 300 meters or 980 feet wide and it's 160 feet deep. The lake flows, uh, in the, into, into the lake flows the Kimchu River which flows into the uh, Chinya River but the possible relation to the Tunguska event is this. Lake Cheko is roughly 
eight kilometers or about five miles north northwest of the epicenter of the Tunguska event, and the lake is inside the blast zone in the probable direction of whatever made the Tunguska event. It's been connected by some scientists to the Tunguska event, and they postulate the lake was created by a chunk of the exploding meteorite that struck the ground. In 2017, the theory was disputed by Russian scientists by proving that the lake is older, possibly even much older than the Tunguska event. Some say the age of the lake. They speculate that Lake Cheko was created during the Tunguska event of 1908, an explosion that destroyed more than 800 square miles of Siberian taiga, the forest. It suggested that the lake, which lies approximately 8 kilometers north-northwest of the event hypocenter, was formed by a fragment which struck the ground. And more recently, evidence suggests that at least a portion of the lake is over twice as old as the date of the meteorite. And other varied evidence, 1961 investigation estimated the lake of the lake is at least 5,000 years old based on meter, meter thick silt deposits on the lake bed. But a 2001 paper concluded the sediments, isotopes, and pollen. Look at this, this is what they said, the, the paper, the, uh, the examination. The pollen suggest that Lake Cheko formed at the time of the Tunguska event. Okay, that's a 2001 paper, that it formed at the time of the Tunguska event. Their recent research indicates that only a meter or so of the sediment layer on the lake bed is normal um, lacustrine sedimentation, indicating much younger lake of about 100 years. The acousto echo soundings, soundings of the lake floor offer other further support of the impact hypothesis, revealing a conical shape of the lake bed, which could be consistent with an impact crater. Also, the lake's long axis points of the hypocenter of the Tunguska explosion about seven kilometers away, and the magnetic readings also indicate a possible meter-sized chunk of rock below the lake's deposit point, deepest point, which may be a fragment of that colliding body. And in 2008, BBC news story of the 100th anniversary of Tunguska event mentioned the researchers at Imperial College London pointed out that many of the trees surrounding the lake are older than 100 years, suggesting the lake could not have been created by the impact of 1908. Researchers also pointed out other problems, including morphology of the lake, lack of impactor debris and ejecta, noting that the characteristics of the impactor required impact theory inconsistent with the existing models. But researchers from the University of Bologna, Vitali, investigated the lake bed a year later, in 2009, and based on evidence suggests, such, uh, such as sedimentation, they reaffirm the conclusions of the 2001 paper that Lake Cheko formed at the time of the Tunguska event. Additional research by Russian scientists 2017 contradict the purely Tunguska event-based formation theory. Core samples of sediment taken from the deepest part of the lake demonstrate an age of 280 years, suggesting at least a portion of the lake existed before the meteorite striking. Okay, a portion of the lake existed, but they still have sediment. They still have sedimentation and pollen and the uh, material from the impact. So this is on Lake Cheko on the Tunguska event on Wikipedia, and I'll leave links below for you for this. So okay, we see that uh, it created a lake. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on, not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue 
my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.